What's up guys? So we are super excited today because behind us is our next boat. We own it, it's ours, we just got the title, just went and purchased it. How did this come about, Randy? So Jordan is always on Facebook looking at postings of sailboats for sale and he stumbled across this boat locally. Someone was selling their 1991 Corsair F27. And of course that piqued his interest right away. So we've been doing a lot of research on multi-hulls and obviously we've toured a lot of boats. We've toured a lot of different monohulls, different multi-hulls, just boats all across the spectrum. So my feelers are always kind of out for good deals. This came up, I went and talked to the owner, talked them down a lot because it's not in very good shape and ended up purchasing this boat for $10,000 USD. So if you're not familiar with these Corsair F27s, they typically sell for around 35K uh, USD. So this is a good deal. Obviously it's not in the shape that those boats would be in, but we could probably put some work into it to bring it back up to that standard. So with Freebie, our major mistake was that no matter how much money we were gonna put in, she would never be worth a lot. With this boat, that's a little bit different because we got her at the right price. We know what she should sell for in good shape and we know what our budget is to refit her. Hopefully we should actually end up coming out positive and making money on this deal. So obviously we've hinted around a lot about our next boat and we're going to have this new design and it's going to be a brand new boat. Well, obviously this is not that boat. We weren't expecting this, but we have gotten a little impatient with waiting for the next boat and this kind of just fell into our laps. So that's gonna be our next, next boat. <laughs> <laughs> so we're still building the boat that we hinted at. It's just taking a little bit longer than we thought. And we're gonna have the full design for you guys. You know, we haven't given up on that project. That is still project number one. This is just gonna be kind of a stopgap for that. And the fact that we can make money on it as well as make DIY content as well, I think you guys would be really interested in it. And it's also going to give us multi-hull sailing experience, which is invaluable to us for sure. But stay tuned because our next, next boat is almost finished being designed and we can share those 3D renderings with you as soon as they're available. We're super excited about that. Unfortunately, that was delayed obviously because of COVID and different complications uh, in the design process on that. But I mean, we're just excited all around. We've got this boat now that we can work on and bring content and sail and just, you know, make a lot of good videos on. And then we've got the next, next boat coming up that we're hopefully, hopefully gonna pick up sometime next year. There's just lots of stuff going on. But the subject of this video is going to be this Corsair behind me. So let's go ahead and give you guys a closer look. All right guys, so one of the biggest advantages of this Corsair Trimaran, this F27, is that it's obviously on this trailer right here. So this boat is currently sitting at our house. So that's amazing, especially for a project boat. Being able to live right next to the boat that you're working on makes a huge difference. Now obviously there have been some previous repairs that aren't complete. This boat does need a bit of work. Supposedly these nets are four years old. That's probably the newest thing on this boat. So the way these amas are constructed is there are three watertight compartments. So one aft, one in the center, and one forward. Each AMA has three compartments. This boat is technically unsinkable because it has multiple watertight compartments as well as the construction materials used to build this boat because it is a foam cord hull. Everything about this boat is fiberglass, carbon fiber, and foam core. So it is just Totally, completely unsinkable. Just giving you guys a good look on the exterior here. Obviously there's some things like crazing, but there's really not too much crazing around the gel coat. I could definitely do patch jobs on the gel coat and restore it, and make it look nice and pretty. Another thing too is this gel coat is heavily oxidized. So as you can see, you know, you put your finger on it and it comes off white. 
So that just means this just needs a really good compounded wax and it will look, you know, the gel coat will look brand new again. Also these windows right here, there's no cracking. You can restore those fairly easy again with some wet sanding and some buffing and they'll look almost new again. Before we go up real quick, I just want to show you guys how these amas fold into the main hall. This is how Corsairs work guys. If you aren't familiar with these folding trimarans, we've got a transom hung rudder that flips up. There is a dagger board that comes down and the draft of this bow is very small. It's under a foot and a half, I believe, with everything up. This motor is non-functioning. So we're definitely gonna be putting on an electric outboard motor. So these AMAs actually have a good amount of storage in the center compartment right here. You shouldn't store anything in the aft and the forward compartments. Those are just strictly flotation, but you can store light things like sails, life jackets, fenders, that kind of thing in these storage compartments in the AMAs. All right guys, I think it's time to go up and give you a look at what she looks like on deck and down below. Again, obviously she is a project, but this is how we got her. We really haven't done much to her yet. We just kind of put her in our yard and we put some painter's tape on some areas just to make certain things watertight or at least more watertight than they were. But the cool thing about this boat is it's actually a center cockpit design. And you guys know I like center cockpits. So in a 27 foot trailer bowl trimaran, we've got a center cockpit here. So there's an aft cabin and then a forward cabin. And then you get to each, you know, through the cockpit right here. So we've got the aft companionway right there. The tiller is right here. This could, you know, definitely needs a new tiller. We've got a solar panel. It's not hooked up to anything. I'm actually going to remove it because I'd rather have the that aft deck as a walkable space. And then maybe I'll put a walkable solar panel on the deck there. Because there's, there's a good amount of space and you, with that solar panel there that you can't walk on, that kind of takes up that room there. So this is a relatively small cockpit. You can't really lay all the way down in it, but if you want to sleep, you're going to sleep in that aft cabin. I'm going to show you that in a little bit. There is a well back here for the outboard, so it's not just hanging off the back, which I, I, I kind of like. And again, like I said earlier, we're going to go electric on this boat. Super easy to do with an outboard motor. So you have the aft beams right here, and these beams are actually made out of carbon fiber as well as fiberglass, and they're filled with pore foam. So really, really strong. And then this folding mechanism here all looks pretty good. Not too bad. So that's where the gas tank's gonna go. Again, we're removing that. We might be putting batteries there instead and putting a door right there and removing that throttle as well, obviously. This right here is actually an emergency compartment. There's access from the bottom that you can get to. So if you were to ever capsize, it can be accessed, you know, while the boat's upside down pretty easily. All right, guys, let's go ahead and go forward and then we're gonna go down below. So we have got tons of deck hardware. I mean, there's four self-tailing winches, uh, two non-self-tailing winches right here, so six total winches, clutches everywhere. As you guys can see, all of that's working, you know, may need a little bit of a service, but we've got your jib tracks up here, as well as, you know, these are gonna be tracks for a bigger Genoa or maybe like a Jenniker or that kind of thing. So we've got multiple tracks. Our forward beams, again, folding mechanism looks good. I do have to replace the compression pads that go right here. Those kind of rotted out. So before I unfold the boat, I have to do that. Got our foredeck hatch right here with a solar vent that works, which is nice. This is the anchor locker. And the reason I actually just recently taped that because I don't want 
too much water getting in there because the drains need to be resealed. And I have yet to do that. So we've got a removable bow sprit right there. That's going to go out while we're sailing. And then obviously our mast, right? So our mast is resting on the boat. And what happens is when you want to put it up, you actually roll it back. It hinges right there around the dagger board and then you winch it up with the trailer winch actually. But the deck is is pretty good. The only thing it really needs is maybe some new non-skid and I, I just want to clean up some of the clutter. You know, I do think there has been a lot of things that have been added to this boat that may not be 100% needed. So, you know, I'll do that. All right guys, so I went ahead and I opened up the hatch here. As you can see, there's a pop top, which is kind of nice. I should say really nice, I like it a lot, just because the headroom in this boat is not very good at all, as you guys will see in a little bit. So, you know, that carpet right there needs to be replaced. Let's go down below. All right guys, welcome to the humble Corsair F. 27 so <laughs> first thing you guys might notice is carpet and you guys know how much I love carpet and that is sarcasm but I learned my lesson on Somnium I'm not gonna go ahead and just go ripping it all out let's go ahead and go forward and then we'll come back so this is our dagger board trunk right here the water tanks gonna be under here so we've got you know a water tank 18 gallons I believe forward section of the boat there is technically I guess you'd call it a v-berth there is a cushion that goes right there it came with the boat it needs to be reupholstered for sure I think we're probably just gonna end up using that as storage I don't really think that's a usable bunk for us there's the forward hatch that I showed you guys from the deck and then this is the head and holding tank I'm not sure if we're going to keep it or not. We may rip it out and put in a composting head. We'll see. It would be nice if the composting head was right there instead of right here. It would make this whole area roomier and then this would just be like the head area with, you know, some storage in the forward section. But not too bad. Let's go ahead and turn around. This is a very, very simple boat on the inside. You know, everything is meant to be as light as possible and as fast as possible. So the water line is very, very narrow. Actually, it's only this this real area right here and the boat goes from being you know slightly wider to Very narrow and again, this is like the outer hull right here. So it's just whoop, Designed to be fast and then we've got You know open storage areas Right here. This is where all of the electronics are meant to go. You know, it's kind of There is still wiring in the boat, but I don't know what works and what doesn't. This is kind of pulled down right here. There is a light. So I'm wondering if that's still wired. If I attach a battery, if it'll still work. It looks like there was a chart plotter or some kind of instrument up there. There is supposed to be a table that fits right here. I, I don't know that I have it. storage compartment right here these are the structural bulkheads right there that the chain plates attached to chain plates have been recently replaced don't know how well of a job the previous owner did because as you can see you're gonna see some jobs that he did that were kind of questionable unfortunately and then this is our galley right here so very very small galley just a little sink and then a, you know, really old, and I don't even know that it's complete, but there's these little alcohol puck stoves here. I don't know if I can get those working or not. I wanna go ahead and demonstrate the headroom in this boat. As you can see, I'm actually sitting right now. I'm not standing, 
that is how little headroom there is in this boat and that is for one reason only and that is to minimize the amount of windage on this boat and to be able to have the sails as low as possible as well to maximize performance so again everything about this boat is performance first cruising second and even though this is technically a performance cruiser it's more of a race boat and it's a race boat that you can you know camp out on for maybe you know maybe a month at a time at the very most it's really meant for weekending um, spending nights on but not you know full-time live aboard for sure as you guys can tell but as you guys know every boat's a compromise so what is the biggest advantage to a boat like this and I think personally that's going to be exterior space so this boat's 19 feet wide with the AMAs extended so you've got so much deck space when you include the netting as well you know way more than any monohull this size obviously so you're going to be living outside this boat more than you're going to be living in it the other thing I think that is just as important if not maybe a little bit more important is going to be performance you know this boat can do over 20 knots if you're really pushing it and if you're just cruising and you just want to get somewhere safely you can easily cruise between 8 to 12 knots this is an extremely fast boat and an extremely fun boat to sail I cannot wait to get it on the water and show you guys so actually the only place that I can stand that's on the inside of this boat is right up here and that's only if the pop top is up okay so as you guys can see again that's a pretty good indication of the headroom in this boat you've got to be either a child or be living life kneeled down you know or living life outside the boat the good thing is the galley is right here under the pop top so you know ventilation for the galley is really good and you can you know stand here and cook very comfortably so that's kind of nice I think I've just about showed you everything in the forward cabin of this boat let's go ahead and show you the aft cabin now so I'm gonna go ahead and step out into the cockpit so right under the tiller and the traveler here is this aft companionway hatch. But you have an aft cabin back here. And this is going to be, you know, the main sleeping area for Randy and I and Morgan as well. We may end up sleeping with, you know, one of us back here with Morgan and then one of us in the main saloon. But this is a really cool feature of this boat. I really like it. So I went ahead and got down into the aft cabin and as you guys can see, it's not too bad back here. This is a nice area of the boat. And then, you know, you've got the helmsman right there, so you're still very near the action. So that small cockpit doesn't feel so small anymore because this is almost an extension of the cockpit. So what are the immediate plans for this boat? As you guys can imagine, you know, she needs a good amount of work. So we're gonna get back into doing DIY videos, which I think a lot of you guys are gonna be very excited about. So I hope that this is gonna satisfy that portion of our viewers. But you know, the goal with this boat is to work on it, make videos about it, go out and sail it, and hopefully improve her enough so that we can get her to the point where we can sell her for between 30 to $40,000. And if you guys are educated about trimarans, you know that that price tag is definitely not unrealistic. That is, you know, what this boat should be worth in decent shape. So anyway, I think that we personally got the boat for the right price and for what we're going to do with it, I think we're going to make money off of it. Obviously, you know, we monetize our content, so we're going to make some money through the content and then we're going to make money hopefully when we go to sell her. At the very least, we're going to break even and make money on the content, so we should come out positive. And obviously we're going to get all the experience. So, you know, until we get our next next boat, we've got this boat to work on, to sail, to make content on. And then we're obviously also gonna continue with the boat tours because the boat tours really pay the bills and help us save money. You know, the boat tours are what made this boat possible, right? So yeah, it's pretty nice. So we are super excited. I want you guys to let us know in the comments down below what you think about this boat, whether you think, you know, we paid too much for it or whether you think it was a good deal. And honestly, if you guys own a Corsair, I'd love for you guys to reach out because I want to get more information from people that are currently sailing these boats. So yeah, anyway guys, I'm gonna go inside and we're gonna wrap up the video in there and give you guys a shot of the baby. I almost forgot to mention, so this boat came with one, two, three, four, five, and then six sails. This is the main sail, or one of the main sails, there's a couple, and it's wrapped around the boom. 
right here. This has a furling boom. Like most Corsairs, the mainsail actually wraps around the boom. And then there are the cushions for the interior. It's aft cabin cushion, V-berth cushion, and then I don't believe I have both cushions for the salon. I just have one, so I don't know where the other one is. And I didn't see it at the previous owner's house. All right guys, so I figured we'd come inside the house with the family in the air conditioning and wrap up this video. Is there anything else that we want to say, you know, about the boat or about our plans with the boat? As with all used boats, obviously this, we see more and more that this is going to be more and more of a project than we thought, but we're hopeful that we'll be having it useful and usable yeah. soon. <laughs> yeah. And you know, there's multiple reasons for us buying the boat, which I know we've kind of glossed over a few of them in this video. And you know, one is financial. We do think we're gonna make money on this boat, whether it's from the resale or the content we create. We hope that we got the boat at the right price. I certainly wanna know what you guys think in the comments down below, especially those of you that know, you know what these Corsairs go for. Well, we're excited to get back to our DIY roots for a little bit. We do know that the boat tours are really what pays the bills, so you can expect those to keep coming and just mix in a little bit of DIY here and there. I'm hoping that the DIY videos do well, and I'm also hoping that we can do, you know, one a week or maybe maybe one every other week. But I will certainly film everything that I do on this boat, and it will get uploaded eventually. So you guys are definitely going to see the entire process of the refit of this vessel. So Corsair trimarans are very, very safe boats. They can definitely cross oceans. The 27s are actually designed for coastal cruising and near shore, offshore, just slight offshore passages, ones that you know will only take a few days. Because the biggest issue with these smaller ones, it's not seaworthiness, it's actually the amount of stuff that you can bring. You can't bring more than a thousand pounds of payload with you, otherwise you could sacrifice speed as well as safety of the vessel. So we're definitely going to be taking this boat on some cruises in and around the Keys. It's awesome that it's on the trailer because we can work on it right here, but we can also take it anywhere in the United States and cruise on it wherever we go. I think the stretch goal for this boat is we want to take her to the Bahamas. So we're hopefully going to get her ready and safe enough to do that with the three of us and to do that for a little bit of time. We hope you guys are as excited as we are to get started on this journey and we can't wait to take you along with us. Right now, it is this little one's nap time, so we need to get her down. But as always, if you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like, a comment down below. If you haven't already, subscribe and follow along with our journey. And if you want to know each and every time we upload a video, go ahead and hit that notification bell. See you guys. Bye. I've got it right and I got it wrong. But I learned my lesson hanging on. Come sit here with me by the fire. And let it go